Hi, Mrs. Jarreau here, bringing you another Crazy Hair Day production. We're going to be doing the Unit 5 test. If you go into your plan, you can see right where we're at. Monday and Tuesday, you were supposed to read your chapter, and your test is due Friday. So let's go ahead and click on More, and that'll take us right to the test. I'm going to right-click on that, and I'm going to open that. Whoops, I want to open that in a new window. Open in a new window and then resize your test and come back here to your breadcrumb trail and let's check out 5.01 and resize that window there we go all right let's take a look at our first test question in fact for this class we kind of have to read them all because they don't go in order unfortunately a sculpture that combines found objects to make a new object is an example of what type of art? Drop shadows, lithography, assemblage, or street art? What is horror vacuum? Vacui. <laughs> Vacui. I don't know. <laughs> when assemblage art is two dimensional. Asymmetrical three dimensional art, when an artwork is entirely filled with detail, or dreamlike imagery inspired by religious, mythological, and literary sources. Number three, installation art is a type of symbolist art, horror vacui, conceptual, or outsider. And that could be vacui too. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I might have to look it up for you. Which of the following artists is a fictional assemblage artist who has been created by a contemporary artist? Johann Dieter Wassmann, Adolf Wolfli, Odilon Redden, or Ferdinand Cheval? The Ideal Palace by Ferdinand Cheval is an example of what type of art? Outside art, trace art, book design, or lithography? Which type of art is usually illegal? Conceptual art? There's that word again. I'm looking it up. Horror vacui. Horror vacui. Horror vacui. Well, according to the dictionary, this is a fear or dislike of leaving empty spaces, especially in an artistic composition. Oh, so like vacui, vacuum, the horror, the fear of leaving space behind okay so which type of art is usually illegal conceptual art horror vacui street art or outsider art which of the following descriptions would be most likely to apply to an artwork with a lot of variety the artwork is dull and uninteresting the artwork includes a lot of empty space the artwork has a disorganized cluttered look the artwork is simple and focuses on a small number of things which of the following artists created symbolist paintings? Odilon Redden, Ferdinand Cheval, Johann Dieter Vossmann, or Kati Kolwitz? What do drop shadows do to an object? Trace a bitmap of the object, add texture to an object, give the illusion of depth, brighten the color of the object. And question 10. Which of the following artists focused on woodcuts, drawings, and etchings? Is it Ferdinand Cheval, Kati Kolwitz, Odilon Redden, or Adolf Wolfli? So let's look for the answers to those questions now. In this section, you're going to learn about different kinds of variety, learn about how different artists use variety in art and design, use the trace bitmap command to trace a path onto an image, clone the traced image path to make copies, and add a variety of colors, patterns, strokes, and filters to the clones of the traced image. And if you did, 5.02 with me, then you've already done many of those objectives. In this lesson, Variety Overview, you'll learn about variety and how it's used in different types of artwork. Before continuing with this le lesson, gather your materials. I don't see any. <laughs> variety. Variety is a measure of how many different art elements an artwork has, as well as how much variation there is in a single art element. 
For example, a painting with a low amount of variety might have just a few brush strokes of one or two colors. A painting with a high amount of variety might have thousands of brush strokes and colors throughout the color spectrum, or it might have a single color line used in a large variety of ways. Artwork with little variety tends to have more simplicity and focuses on a smaller number of things. Artwork with a lot of variety can look more disorganized and have a more cluttered look. Oh, I remember that question. All right, an artwork with variety. Where was that question? Dun, dun, dun. I know there was a question about variety. Ah, here we go. It was number seven. Which of the following descriptions would most likely apply to an artwork with a lot of variety? Did you find the answer with me? Artwork with a lot of variety can look more disorganized and have a more cluttered look. Mm. One of the decisions an artist makes is how much variety an artwork needs to make it interesting without sacrificing its focus and clarity. Let us learn about how specific art elements can be used to create variety. Color and value. Color variety is how many different colors there are in an artwork. Variation in the value and saturation of a color or a set of colors is another way to create variety. For example, even a black and white artwork can have a lot of value variety if it uses many shades of gray. An unpainted statue would have a low color variety, which means the artist might need to add variety in other ways. A painting using a single color of paint would also have low variety, although the artist could use the canvas or paper of the artwork as a way to add variety. The position and shape of a statue outside might create variety and value with the moving shadows caused by the sun moving across the sky. A painting with a rainbow would have a high color of variety because a rainbow contains all of the colors visible to the human eye. A painting of a flower garden might have a high color variety because flowers come in many different colors. A realistic painter might use both low and high color variety depending on what they were painting. For example, if an artist were painting desert scenery, they might need less variety of color than if they were painting a crowded street scene. For abstract paintings, how much or how little color variety to use might be one of the first things a painter would have to decide on before getting started. Texture. Texture variety can refer to variations in visual texture in two-dimensional artwork like a drawing or actual texture in three-dimensional artwork like a wood carving. Variety in visual texture is created through a large number of differences in color, line, space, and shape. There are different techniques for creating visual texture based on the type of art medium an artist is working in. For example, artists using pen and ink can use hatching to give a drawing visual texture. With painting, visual texture can be created by simply painting on different surfaces. Actual texture can be created by painting thick layers of paint. The amount of texture in a drawing or painting depends on what the artist wants to represent and how they want to represent it. For example, a drawing of a white wall probably wouldn't have much visual texture, but a painting of a tapestry could be detailed enough to show the individual threads. Shape and form. Variety of shape and form, and remember form is three-dimensional, is often created using line, color, and texture. Shapes and forms can vary in size, shape, color, and number. A drawing filled with rows of identical circles might make an interesting pattern, but it wouldn't have any shape variety. Making the rows of circles different sizes would increase the variety of the image and depending on how the sizes were arranged might make it less like a pattern. Making some of the circles into squares and rectangles would increase the variety of shapes in the image. Making the shapes different colors would increase the variety of the image still more. Replacing the shapes on the right side of the image with one large circle would be one way to use numbers to increase the variety of the image by contrasting one circle 
with many other shapes. Variety of form can be increased in the same way. Let's take a look at your checkpoint. What art element has the highest amount of variety in this image? So we've got this frog here, texture. Now, right off the bat, I think, wow, there is a lot of texture, but I think what element is creating that variety of texture? The element is line. Look at all of the different types of lines. There's calligraphy lines, there's curved lines. We have these little tiny etchy dashed lines. So I would go with line. The amount of variety in an artwork depends on the artist, but some types and styles of artwork lend themselves to greater amounts of variety. Let us learn about some types and styles of artwork that tend to use a lot of variety. Assemblage is a type of sculpture that combines found objects to make a new object. Like collage, assemblage was popularized through the Dada movement of the early 20th century, although it didn't get its name until the 1950s. The word assemblage came from a series of butterfly wing collages by the French artist Jean Dubuffet that he called Assemblage des Imprints, or Assembly of Prints. His assemblages were so popular that people began applying the term assemblage retroactively to older pieces of art from the 1930s. Assemblage art can look like anything and be made from anything. The selected found objects are sometimes chosen to highlight a central theme. Some assemblage artwork is interactive and uses moving parts to engage the viewer of the artwork. Artists often use junk and other worthless objects to create something of lasting value. This type of art can serve as a memorial and reminder of the stuff that's part of daily life in the world. Installation art. Installation art is assemblage art on a grand scale, often filling room size spaces with an artist's concept for a space. Installation art often uses found objects, constructions made from many different materials, video, sound, interactive digital objects, or connections to the internet. In painting, the medium of the artwork is canvas and paint. In installation art, the medium is an empty, predefined space and what the artist chooses to put in that space. A work of installation art is called an installation. Some installations are meant to be permanent, while other installations are only temporary. Many installations are site-specific, which means they're des designed for a single space. Taken out of their space, site-specific art probably wouldn't fit and might lose whatever local context the artist might be commenting on. Not all installation artwork has a lot of variety, but artworks in the genre of installation art can look like almost anything. Installation art is a type of conceptual art. Conceptual art is a type of artwork that's based on an artist's idea or concept rather than how the artwork looks or the artist's skill in making it. One of the most famous examples of modern conceptual art is a piece by the English artist Damien Hirst. In 1991, Hirst built The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, which consists of a tiger shark preserved in a giant tank of formaldehyde Damien Hirst is a leading member of the Young British Artists, a group of successful and influential conceptual artists. Conceptual art is controversial. In England, several painters created a group called the Stuckists to criticize conceptual art because of its focus on novelty and concept over sincere expression through artistic technique and skill. Street art. Street art is any artwork developed in and for public spaces. 
street art is usually illegal or not supported by government or other public or private organizations. And I do remember a question that asked about which type of art is usually illegal. Ding! <laughs> As a result, street artists are usually anonymous or work under a pseudonym or nickname in the middle of the night when everyone's sleeping. Like installation art, street art can be in many different forms and media, such as graffiti, stickers, posters, and street installations. Street art is sometimes used to communicate political or anti-establishment ideas, or to beautify public spaces that are considered ugly. Street art is most common in large cities all over the world. Remember, street art doesn't necessarily have to be illegal in order to be street art, though. Lithography is a way of printing text or images onto paper using a flat stone or metal plate. Lithography was invented at the end of the 18th century by Alois Senefelder, a German actor and playwright who needed a cheap way to make copies of his plays. And his name might be Alois since he's German. A greasy liquid is used to draw or paint an image directly onto the plate and then the plate is rinsed with water. When ink is added to the plate, it sticks to the greasy liquid and rolls off the wet part of the plate. Then paper is flattened against the plate and the plate's ink is pressed against the paper to make a print. Today, Photographic lithography is used to make most mass-produced printed materials such as books, maps, and newspapers. Different types of lithography are even used to make microchips for computers. Lithography is an art form, as an art form, didn't really become popular until the 20th century. Remember, 20th century would be 1900s. The popularization of the artistic, of the artistic merits of lithography came about through Fernand Merleau, who worked for his family's printing house. Merleau invited several prominent artists such as Henri Matisse, Marc Chagall, and Pablo Picasso to work directly with a lithographic plate to create original artworks. These prints were then used to make posters promoting the artist's work. Lithography doesn't necessarily have more variety than any other type of art but it was a new printing technique that allowed for far greater variety in the use of color and line in mass-produced printing. Book design is the art of designing a book's shape, cover, layout, and typeface. Most books are the same basic rectangular shape, but book designers can make books that are incredibly different from each other by using a variety of colors, images, and typefaces. A book designer will often try to match the book's design to the content of the book. Different book genres have different types of standard designs. Many book designers work with publishers, but some book designers create books as art rather than as something to be published. For example, a science fiction novel usually has a very different look and feel than a textbook on biochemistry. Without looking at them closely, most people would be able to tell which was which. Unlike installation and street art, Book design is an example of an art which forces artists and designers to work within a specific medium. Some artists push the boundaries of what makes something a book, but push it too far and it stops being a book and becomes something else. What type of book is this page most likely to come from? Is that science fiction, comic, textbook, or cookbook? I hope you said cookbook. Variety is used to make an artwork more interesting or to make it more realistic if the subject matter of the artwork has a lot of detail. Let us learn about specific artworks, artists rather, and their use of variety. Ferdinand Cheval was a postal carrier from a small town in France who spent 33 years of his life building a palace which is called Le Palais Ideal. The ideal palace is an example of outsider art. 
which is art created by those with no formal artistic training and no contact with the mainstream art world or institutions. Outsider art is also called naive art. In 1879, Cheval tripped over a rock and became fascinated by its shape. He took it home and from that time on continued to collect rocks which he used to build his palace. The palace is asymmetrical and has a variety of shapes and details which combine to make a unique and strange looking building. In the beginning, Cheval was mocked by his neighbors, but after a time, his work began to attract travelers. Today, thousands of people visit it every year. Katy Kalwitz was a German artist in the late 19th and early 20th century who focused on woodcuts, drawings, and etchings. Kalwitz drew many self-portraits of herself from youth to old age. In drawing this self-portrait of herself as a young woman, Kalwitz used a variety of thin, thick, straight, and curved lines to draw the outlines, detail, and shadows of her face. The thick, dark brush stroke style lines suggest an unfinished drawing, more like a sketch than something that might end up in a gallery. Kalwitz's use of a variety of lines to capture the details of her face and the expressiveness of her personality shows the versatility and power of ink line drawings in the hands of a talented artist. Urlan Redden was a French painter and lithographer in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Redden's symbolism paintings used dreamlike imagery inspired by religious, mythological, and literary sources to explore his feelings. Symbolists believe that artists should not limit themselves to presenting the world around them, and that they should use well-known and obscure images to express abstract ideas. A symbol is something that refers to something else. For example, a symbolist painting of the ocean might be referring to the power of the ocean or the abundance of life in the ocean, among many other things. In the painting Flower Clouds, Redon uses a large variety of colors to fill the sky and watery reflections with bright and explosive shapes. The shapes and colors are reminiscent of Impressionism, which Redon was probably familiar with. This contrasts strongly with the dark boat and its washed out passengers. The passengers in the boat are slumped over as though asleep with the color filled sky suggesting a rich and vivid dream life. Johann Dieter Wassmann was a fictional late 19th century German assemblage artist whose life and art have been and are being created by the contemporary artist Jeff Wassmann. According to his story, J.D. Wassmann's art was lost and forgotten for 70 years until it was rediscovered and promoted by the Wassmann Foundation, an organization dedicated to exhibiting his art. Johann Dieter Wassmann was a sewage engineer whose early assemblage art was intended to inspire creativity in his engineering students. Made from wooden boxes, pages cut from medical textbooks and other miscellaneous objects, Vossman's work exhibits a large amount of variety. The variety of Vossman's art isn't limited to the assemblages themselves. It's present in all of the texts, images, and photographs that help to create the genuineness of Vossman's fictional life. Vossman's assemblage, Vorwarts, Go Forward, is a representative example of Vossman's artwork. Combined inside a wooden box are an eye chart, an uncoiling spring, half of a set of dentures, and an oar-like piece of metal. The uncoiling spring creates the feeling of a tunnel receding into the distance. Looking at another way, the spring together with the dentures and oar-like metal object, the coil looks like the right eye of a face staring out from the box into the distance. Adolf Wolfli was a Swiss artist in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. He suffered from mental illness and spent most of his life in a psychiatric hospital. 
It was there that he began to paint and draw. Even though he had no formal artistic training, Wolfley created thousands of paintings and drawings. His artwork has a huge influence on the French artist, or was, on the French artist Jean Dubuffet, who was fascinated with artwork by self-taught or outsider artists. He called this type of artwork art brute, which translates to rough or raw art. The Wolfley painting, Irin Anstalt Banhan, is a typical example of his art, featuring a large variety of colors, shapes, lines, and text. The repeated lines and shapes create an almost architectural effect with a warped perspective that makes it look like a cityscape squashed flat. His artwork is a perfect example of horror vacui. There we go, horror vacui. <laughs> which is when an artwork is entirely filled with detail. Remember the fear of leaving something empty? Hor vacui is Latin, which means fear of empty space. Artwork that has a hor vacui quality can seem obsessive or compulsive. These are qualities often found in outsider art. Based on the artwork you've seen in this lesson, who made this artwork? Was it Kati Kalwitz, Odalyn Redden, Adolf Wolfley, or Ferdinand Cheval? Let's review those artists we studied one last time. Ferdinand Cheval, The Outsider, built Le Palais Ideal, Kati Kalwitz, remember? She did the self-portrait and used ink. Odalyn Redden, yes, he was the one that did symbolism, symbolist art. And then it was Vossman who did the assemblages. And Wolfley was the outsider who had that, what is it called? Hor vacui, didn't like to leave any space empty. Adolf Wolfley, Johann Dieter Vossmann, Odalyn Redden, Kati Kolwitz, Ferdinand Cheval. Who was it? Odalyn Redman, yes. All right, so. Let's take a look and see if we can answer all these questions. A sculpture that combines found objects to make a new object is assemblage. What is horror vacui? When an artwork is entirely filled with detail, right? Not leaving any blank spaces. Installation art is a type of conceptual art comes from the artist's ideas or concepts. Which of the following artists is a fictional assemblage artist who has been created by a contemporary artist? Johann Dieter Vossmann, remember? He was the engineer. Yes, and his work was lost for 70 years. The Ideal Palace by Ferdinand Chaval is an example of what type of art? Outsider art, that's right. He had no formal training, naive art. We already answered that one. We already answered that one. Eight, which of the following artists created symbolist paintings? Hmm, I want to say Ferdinand Cheval. Nope, it's not Ferdinand Cheval. Ah, Odalyn Redden. That's right, symbolist paintings. How could I forget? There we go. And what do drop shadows do to an object? This came from the 5.02 project that we did in class together. You remember what drop shadows are. They give the illusion of depth. And which of the following artists focused on woodcuts, drawings, and etchings? Etchings, etchings, etchings. I believe that was Kati Kalvitz. Let's go and just take a look. I always like to check to make sure. 
Yes, an early 19th and 20th century artist who focused on woodcuts, drawings, and entries, uh, etchings. Remember, 1800s would be the 19th century, and 1900s would be the 20th century. So that was a long time ago. All right, make sure that you save all of your responses and then submit your quiz. You're done for the week. Good job. And did you do your hair crazy today? I sure hope so. I'm not the only one with purple hair and pigtails, am I? <laughs>